Hello everyone, Midnight TV here, bringing you a class guide for the new class that's hitting Trove, the Revenant. The Revenant's definitely a class I suggest everybody picks up. Uh, it is going to be kind of costly because he's new, but let me go ahead and go over that with you. You can either purchase him from the store in a $20 pack, or you can purchase him from the uh, class tab for 8,000 credits. Uh, I suggest if you got extra 20 bucks, toss it in for Trove, support them, and you'll also get a whole bunch of goodies that come along with it. A new class means that we need to learn a whole bunch of new abilities. So I'm going to go ahead and start off this video with talking about all the new abilities that you're going to have to pick up for the Revenant. Let's begin with the Revenant's passive. It's called Vengeful Spirits. Left clicking with the Revenant allows him to heal himself for a small amount of health as well as dealing a small amount of damage. What I find really cool about the Revenant's passive is that as you kill enemies you gain something called Vengeful Spirits and whenever you would have died you instead spawn something called a Spirit Wraith which is empowered by more Vengeful Spirits that you collect. There is a cooldown on the passive so be careful not to rely on it too much. The Revenant's right click ability is called Borwick Bash. Uh, it's pretty awesome in the fact that they added a taunt ability into Trove. It works in a cone effect, so you do have to properly guide it. The damage on it isn't too shabby, however, you're going to be doing other things for your main damage source. But the cool part about this is if playing in a group, you will be able to taunt mobs off of others. Now we get into some of the fun abilities. Uh, his number one ability is called Spirit Spears, and it does more damage based on more of maximum health that you have. So, as we get into the Garen section, you'll see we want to have a lot of maximum health to make this have more bang for its buck. You hold down your number one, and you don't let go. Just keep on holding it, holding it, and the mobs will die very quickly. The Revenant's last ability is his ultimate ability called Spirit Storm. Man, is this OP OP. It basically makes a cyclone around you, and you shoot out little fire exploding spirit blasts. Now, these actually heal players and damage the enemies, so the, the spiral you see does damage, and each of those fireballs deal damage, and this is increased based on the maximum health. So, once again, this ability combined with the number one ability is the reason why we are going to be stacking maximum health as this class. And as you see here, I just walk in, I just press my number 2 ability, and this is an uber 6 guys, everything here is uber 6 or higher that I'm showing you. Things just literally melt, so amazing. And let's not forget, as we're doing all this massive damage, we're also healing all the allies around us. Here's a short clip of me soloing a hard mode spike walker shadow tower all by myself. This took me literally two minutes to clear this floor, uh, given that I did have the help of some lava, but it's still extremely strong. I can stand in the lava, I can do all this damage, and as you can look at my health, I have no risk. And again, this is hard mode spike walker. Uh, what you want to do pretty much is use your number two ability, ultimate on cooldown, and spam your number one ability and keep your potions going. As you can see I'm using the Valor's file, which is what I was talking about earlier. I constantly have enough potions to never uh, run out of potions. The coefficient for the ultimate and the number one ability is pretty high for the Revenant, so the likelihood that you're going to trigger another flask file is greatly increased. The other parts of this combo that you guys haven't seen yet, which I'll get into in the gearing section coming up, is the Valor's File, the Chromatic Emblem, and the Samantha Ally. Alright, now we're on to the gearing section. The first thing we'll look at is the Ally. You either want Prowling Shadow or Samantha. We want to get that gain 2.2% health each time you damage an enemy effect. That way we stay alive while spamming our number one and ultimate. The next thing we're going to look at is the Chronomatic Emblem. The Chronomatic Emblem is going to reduce the cooldown on our ultimate. That way, every time we potion, we will build the ultimate again sooner. 
very very strong. The next thing is the vials. Use either the chaos vial if you have a rejuvenation station handy, so if you're uber 6 farming that's very good there, or use the valor's vial for areas like maybe like a shadow tower where you need to be able to get more flash charges off of doing critical hits. The last part of this combination is the sure strike emblem. Uh, you 100% need and want this as you do for almost every single class and setup in trove. It's extremely strong. You get 100% critical hits every time you potion. Okay, now let's move on to the hat, weapon, face, and ring. On your hat, you're gonna want to have a hat just like this one: maximum health, critical damage, percent health, and then health regen. The reason why we take health regen here is because we can infinitely spam our number one ability. Therefore, we do not even need attack speed. On our weapon, we want to make sure our second and fourth stats are critical damage and maximum health. For the third stat, if you have a sure strike emblem, we can go with jump or health regen. Otherwise, you want critical hit. Our face is going to be basically a mirror of the hat. We're going to have critical damage, maximum health, and health regen for this one. Then we come to our ring. Our ring is going to be maximum health, and then you can pick any one that you want from health regen, jump, or magic find. I just have a health regen one here, and it does help out quite a bit. And then let me show you guys my stats. These are the stats that I have at the moment. And remember, I'm only level 17, so I'm not even max level at the moment. Alright, now I just wanted to end this video showing you guys my hard mode spike walker kill. I soloed this entire dungeon all the way up to the boss, and I soloed the boss. It took me about 2 minutes on each floor to clear. And this actual boss fight, I sped it up real fast, but the entire fight took 11 minutes to do. If you're curious about the rotation I used here, I'm basically using my ultimate ability on cooldown as well as using my number one ability uh, in between. The way that I use my flask is I just want to make sure that I have the sure strike buff up at all times as well as if I near 13 flasks then I'll use a flask or two just to make sure that I you know, maximize the amount of charges I have. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. I hope it helped you out, and if it did, please consider liking and subscribing.